Hello and Geek Hobora, I'm so happy you're here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be answering your fertility questions. I have a bunch of things that you guys have submitted on Instagram at Nabella. You guys asked me a bunch of fertility questions that I'm gonna answer today. And I've been wanting to do this for quite some time because I wanted to update you guys as to where I'm at in our TTC journey, our trying to conceive journey. And it's emotional, it's a lot of things as it has been for so many years, but I'm excited excited and thankful to have a platform where I can do this, where we can talk, we can normalize these conversations because I think that the difficulty in trying to conceive is often, it's just often not shared and I want to be a place where you feel safe and you can feel like we can kind of discuss this together, we can navigate it together. It is unexpected and unpredictable and there is no right or wrong way to grieve or to figure out how your body is moving and shaking as you're trying to conceive. So I am here for you as I have been for so many years and I can will continue to be here for you guys. And I'm excited to dive into these questions. So let's get started. Okay, so I have my questions here and I screenshotted a bunch of questions um, because so many were pouring in and I'm really thankful again to everyone that asked. So let's get started. The first question is, how are you doing mentally? And I appreciate this question so much because mentally, I think it's still as it has been an up and down battle. Some days I'm optimistic, I'm hopeful. I can speak in language that is positive and I feel good and I feel like I'm manifesting goodness and good news to come. And then there are days where I am my biggest critic, my worst enemy, I am mad at my body, I am angry at my inability to naturally conceive. I speak poorly about myself. Honestly, I am some days great and some days I am a mess. And yesterday, for example, last night, I was a mess. I was texting my sister and I was like, what's even the point anymore? Because I was just so down on most days. I feel like I'm a pretty optimistic person. I try to be super hopeful and I try to be very mindful of the language that I use. But the days that I slip, I am mad at my body for not working, you know? And that's in and of itself its own journey, realizing that my body isn't wrong or bad, it's just different. And I want to normalize this fact that like TTT journeys and fertility journeys aren't just like talking about baby dust and being super happy and, and you know, hopeful. That's amazing. And I love the days where I'm on that vibration and that high, but it's also full of tears and sadness and confusion. Confusion and feeling punished for your body. Like you feel like your situation is a punishment and navigating that is its own beast. But right now, today, I am trusting the process. The next question is how long after marriage did you start planning to have a child? So after we got married, Seth and I pretty much jumped right in. <laughs> Whoa, no, we, started our journey to try to conceive right after marriage. So we are about to celebrate six years of marriage this August. And so that would be six years. Have you had a miscarriage? And the answer to that is no. I have never had a miscarriage. I have never been able to get pregnant. However, my doctor has warned me that upon getting pregnant, should I ever be lucky enough to get pregnant, to be very aware that I will most likely suffer from multiple miscarriages before a successful pregnancy. Like this is something that they have shared with me. And so that fear has been looming over me. It makes it so scary, you know, like even on the day that I do see, God willing, a positive pregnancy test, that doesn't necessarily mean that the baby would see a full term. And that awareness is a lot to take in. Have you accepted the fact that having kids might not ever happen? Mm. <laughs> yes and no. I think no matter what, we wanna have children. And so we have been trying to adopt for quite some time. It's actually really difficult, especially when you're trying to adopt from Bangladesh. Have I ever come to the terms of the fact that maybe us 
you know, having biological children that I carry as an option, um, I'm working on it. And I think all I can do is know that whatever is supposed to happen is written, number one. And number two, if that is the case, then we are open to, and we are still open to, so many different alternatives. I thought I could do this, <laughs> and I can do this. I always forget how emotional these videos can be, so bear with me, but I am working on trying to wrap my head around what things look like if, you know, I can't carry our child. What would that look like? And I'm still figuring that out. We're going to bring life into this world in some way and that could be in a way that we never thought and that could be in a way that we did. Okay, so the next question is, do you think adoption is a good option? And yes, um, per my last answer, absolutely. We hope to adopt is something that we are totally open to. How do you deal with disappointment month after month? So when taking tests and dealing with disappointment, I have tried to shake it off, do something happy right after to like get my mind off of it. You know what's tough is when you tell someone who has children your experience and they'll tell you something optimistic or they'll tell you like everything's gonna be fine and they mean well, but sometimes you just feel like you're kind of dealing with it alone. The people that you're surrounding yourself with, if they're all past that point in their life or their family is formed or they're a fertile friend, then it can kind of be tough to find that common ground of understanding. I think oftentimes people think, well, it's not that big of a deal if it's not that big of a deal to them. Finding community with like-minded people or people that are in the same situation has helped me deeply. So I, I love support groups. I love forums. I love Instagram communities that are built on talking about TTC journeys. That has really helped me because you're finding people that are going through the same season as you. And so you guys can give each other comfort that's different. Um, that's why I wanted to make this video actually is because I like to watch videos like this on YouTube now. I find like my whole feed of suggested videos are videos about people and their TTC journey because that's where I only feel understood, especially right now in a season where I think during this pandemic, you know, there's so many pregnancies, so many announcements of babies, so many beautiful baby showers and awesome pictures sharing, you know, like awesome, like we're pregnant and you're like, yes, I'm so happy for you. But you're like, okay, am I gonna have that kind of exciting post like am i gonna share that news ever you're excited for those people but you're like crap what's wrong with my body and then you're like oh, am i annoying because it's been like six years of this but you can't control like the fact that you had a consistent problem for so long you know i think that's another thing another reason why i try not to talk about it too much because you're like okay People are so tired of hearing your same old <laughs> issue, <laughs> but I can't help it. <sighs> okay, this is what it's all about, by the way. Giving yourself the permission to feel all the feelings. It's okay. You can be so optimistic and hopeful and happy one minute, and it's okay if 10 minutes later you're a mess because both of those things are real and they're valid and they deserve the time and space to be felt. Even if you've been trying for 13 years, it's okay if it still hurts you just as much in year 13 as it did in year one. Because that's something I'm grappling with. It's like, okay, it's six years, but that doesn't mean it doesn't hurt any less just because it's been so long. Whew. Can we just hug? <laughs> I'm hugging you. <laughs> How does infertility affect your relationship with yourself and your partner and your family? So I think that my infertility does not negatively impact any of these relationships. In fact, I think some of my relationships have gotten stronger, even with my family. Um, and I've learned, you know, who's really there for me and who's really there for us as we navigate this journey. And then when it comes to Seth and I, I would say we've definitely gotten stronger as a result. You know, there's nothing like intending 
something together. I think it just makes it that much more beautiful and that much more fought for. And Seth and I are no stranger to fighting for what we want and fighting for what we love. And so that doesn't change when it comes to a baby because this baby is intended. Like this journey is intended and thoughtful and meaningful. And I think we've gotten stronger. I know that we've gotten stronger as partners. Well, I wanted to do some more questions, but my neighbor's mowing their lawn and my parents are right out here enjoying the sun and I wanna join them and seeing my dad back from the hospital, sitting out, enjoying the sun and taking it in makes me wanna be right next to him. You know, there was a question in here, like, do you feel pressure from family or circumstances? And I think circumstances have made me feel even more than ever a desire to want to like really see this through for the two people sitting out there so yeah thank you guys so much for being here i hope that this was a healing time for you i know it is for me anytime that we're doing this and we get to sit down and we get to chat i always feel so much lighter and i feel really seen so thank you i'm appreciative of these opportunities to have very important conversations and i want to normalize these moments, these conversations, and these feelings. So thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate you. I'm so happy and thankful that you're here and I'll see you all very soon. Bye.